Good day everyone! We are your presenters for today and we will be discussing about structural linguistics and behavioral psychology as a school of thought in second language acquisition. First of all, a school of thought is defined as a set of ideas or opinions that a group of people share about a matter. So in this case, what we will be talking about is the outlook or perspective of a certain group of people on how structural linguistics and behavioral psychology works in the acquisition or learning of second language. Now to fully understand what I mean, let us first define what is structural linguistics. Structural linguistics is an approach to linguistics and is part of overall approach of structuralism. It is stress examining language as a system of interconnected units. Structural linguistics involves collecting a corpus of utterances and then attempting to classify all the elements of the corpus at their different levels. The phonemes, morphemes, lexical categories, noun phrases, verb phrases, and sentence types. So in the 1950s, the Structural or Descriptive School of Linguistics with its advocates, Leonard Bloomfield, Edward Safir, Charles Hackett, Charles Fries, and others, prided themselves in a rigorous application of scientific observation of human languages and to identify the structural characteristics of those languages. An important action of structural linguistics was that languages can differ from each other without limit and that no preconceptions could apply across languages. So this is the key idea for this school of thought. The structural or descriptive school uses the scientific principle of observation of human language. Only the publicly observable responses could be studied. When we say observable, it pertains to the languages and its structure. How does language differ from each other without limit and that Languages can be divided into pieces or units. So how does structuralism work in learning a language? First, meaning is determined by the context where the relationship among the parts takes place. Second, an emphasis on understanding grammatical structure such as sentence structure, patterns of sentences, and appropriate grammar and composition. Learning language according to structuralist perspective should start from understanding the basic structures, patterns to be able to move on onto the complex ones. Third, it focuses on four main skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. The natural order of language learning starts from listening. It goes before speaking, reading, and writing. Fourth, language forms are seen as a sign system. Fifth, to learn new structures, it is basic to find the new and previous knowledge. And lastly, reading and writing develops from the comprehension of the basic underlying grammatical structures of the system. Strengths of Structuralism in Language Learning It helps learners grasp grammar in an easier way. It supports proper use of the language and verbal and written expression. The knowledge of foundation of the basic structure before complex grammar and inductive method goes from the parts to the whole comprehension. The structuralist approach implies that in order for anyone to fully understand a concept such as language or linguistics, they must first understand the subsets and how these fit into the overall structure. Additionally, an important factor in the structuralist approach is understanding that these subsets all fit and work together collaboratively. Structural linguistics can be compared to the body parts of human. It consists of different parts or organs and systems that work together to function. Same as with learning a second language, we start by learning or grasping from the basic knowledge of language to the complex ones. When a learner finally understands the rules and its complexity, he or she will naturally learn to use it in uttering words, forming sentences with meaning, and trying it in communication. Behavioral Psychology or Behaviorism The behavioral psychologists developed their theories while carrying out a series of experiments on animals. They observed that rats or birds, for example, could be taught to perform various tasks by encouraging habit forming. Research has rewarded desirable behavior, and this was known as positive reinforcement, while undesirable behavior was punished or simply not rewarded, which was called negative reinforcement. 
So the behaviorist B.F. Skinner then proposed this theory as an explanation for language acquisition in humans. Skinner suggested that the child imitates the languages of its parents or carers. Successful attempts are rewarded because an adult who recognizes a word spoken by a child will praise the child or will give him what is it asking for. Successful utterances are therefore reinforced while unsuccessful ones are forgotten. Behavioral Psychology in Language Learning One of its characteristics is empirical as it is based on observation or experience rather than a theory or logic. It involves conditioning language learners with reinforcement, either positive or negative, to make the right connection between stimuli and desired responses. Drilling in language classroom was a dominant and effective method. Learning a behavior by conditioning. Behaviorism tries to explain how an external event or the stimulus causes change in the behavior of an individual or which causes the response. Behaviorist psychology states that people are conditioned to learn many forms of behavior including language through the process of training or conditioning. The Principle of Behaviorist Theory The major principle of the behaviorist theory rests on the analysis of human behavior in observable stimulus-response interaction and the association between them. Basically, the behavior theory of stimulus-response learning, particularly explained in the operant conditioning model, considers all learning to be the establishment of habits as a result of reinforcement or reward. The behaviorist theory believes that infants learn oral language from other human role models through a process involving imitation, rewards, and practice. Human role models in a child's environment provide the stimuli and rewards. When a child attempts oral language or imitates the sounds or speech patterns, they are usually praised and given affection for their efforts. Thus, praise and affection becomes the rewards. Basic Tenets of Behaviorist Theory Number 1. Behaviorist Theory Dwells on Spoken Language Primary medium of language is oral. Speech is language because there are many languages without written forms, because we learn to speak before we learn to read and write. Then, language is primarily what is spoken and secondarily what is written. That is why spoken language must have a priority in language teaching. Number 2. Behaviorist theory is the habit formation theory of language teaching and learning, reminding us the learning of structural grammar. Language learning concerns us by not problem solving but the information and performance of habits. In other words, language learning is a mechanical process leading the learners to habit formation whose underlying scheme is the conditioned reflex. Thus, it is definitely true that language is controlled by the consequences of our behavior. Number 4. All learning is the establishment of habits as the result of reinforcement and reward. Positive reinforcement is reward, while negative reinforcement is punishment. In a stimulus situation, a response is exerted. And if the response is positively augmented by a reward, then the association between the stimulus and response itself reinforced and thus, response will very likely to be manipulated by every appearance of stimulus. The result will yield conditioning. When responses to stimuli are coherently reinforced, then habit formation is established. The process of learning goes on like this. The stimuli produces response which needs reinforcement to result in the habit formation and number five the learning due to its socially conditioned nature can be the same for each individual in other words each person can learn equally if the conditions in which the learning takes place are the same for each person behaviorist theory in second language acquisition trains or teach persons or students a language with different methods like controlled behavior, providing specific stimuli and in result, getting positive or negative response by employing external reinforcement, 
to encourage and convince learners or trainees in order to reach definite objectives.